Imagine you are appearing for a senior DevOps or a senior cloud architect interview and the interviewer gives you this scenario. One of their application is receiving almost 10 million orders per month. It is a monolith application which is slowing down. The deployment is take, already taking two hours and any one issue in the system crashes everything. And the interviewer question is, what do you think should we move to microservices? And if you just outrightly say yes, because microservices is better, then I am sorry to say, but you will be rejected because this question is not a straightforward yes or no and the interviewer expects you to understand and take the layered approach step by step so in this video if you're new don't worry we'll first understand what is monolith with a real life example then we'll understand what is a microservices try to compare uh, the pros and cons of both and by the end of this video i will give you a decision tree which you can keep in your mind and probe that this particular question step by step and ask follow-up questions in order to come to a decision whether this particular application qualifies to become a microservices or not and this approach will separate you from a beginner this approach will prove that you have done things you know things to a next level so without further ado let's get started so before we answer the interview question first of all let's understand what is the difference between monolith versus microservices application so using a real life example a monolith could be treated as a big kitchen and within that big kitchen you have different chefs cooking in Indian, Chinese, fast food like pizza, all in the same kitchen. Now what will happen? For example, if there is an influx of a lot of orders and then if one particular chef starts using all of its resources, the other two would be waiting, right? Secondly, if there is a fire alarm while Indian was cooking and giving a tadka in the dal and uh, suddenly the fire alarm breaks, the chef two and chef three, although they are making Chinese and pizza, have to rush out of premises, leave the kitchen and they would not be able to serve even though the problem was only with the Indian chef and the food so this is how monolith works that initially you have everything within the same environment so you have your UI your business logic layer your database everything is within the same system and this is why it is called as monolith but it is having its own problems because you know you cannot deploy easy you have to bring the whole system down even if you have to deploy something on the user interface you have to make sure that everything else is also down scaling cannot happen independently everything is interdependent and because it is a single point of failure you know it creates a huge bottleneck code base is also for example java and mysql the, everything although there could be use cases which uh, for other programming languages or databases to come in for example for ui you might use a lightweight database for caching but you can't do it because it is a monolith then team bottleneck uh, developers cannot work in uh, independently even though they are working on uh, in two uh, different work streams they cannot simply push the code because of the interdependency so this is the way we started building systems traditionally all the big companies today started here but very soon they realized that now with the kind of growth they are seeing they have to move to microservices and microservices as you might have already guessed is like a food court and in that particular food court there are different food stalls where chef one has a food stall one where you know he or she must be having his or her own kitchen where they can cook Indian then food stall two can cook Chinese and food stall three can uh, do food fast food like pizza and while all of these come under food court they can individually work there is no interdependency Indian has his own kitchen Chinese has his own and fast food has its own so it is loosely coupled this is tightly coupled this is the concept okay they are together but then they can you know grow independently so generally in a microservices architecture you have an api gateway and every service works separately so for example for an application like e-commerce you will have your user service for example working on node.js and mongodb catalog services using uh, python or postgres payment service java mysql or your order service could use go or redis all are working independently so for example if there is a request coming only to uh, you know see a user profile or and validated user profile the request will only go to user service the rest of the services are independent it is not getting impacted by the load which is coming in api gateway is your single point of entry so this is the basic difference and it gives you a lot of flexibility because teams could work independently you can scale independently you can use different technology stack for different needs but 
again it also has some downsides because it is very complex you cannot simply build a, a microservices architecture out of nowhere there is a migration journey which we'll come to when we'll answer this question this also comes in because not everything is a blank yes for microservices it looks fancy on the paper but when you go and design a microservices architecture building it and more than that maintaining it is again a big challenge you need good people and you need a bigger team unlike monolith so we'll come to that decision making but this is on the surface this is the difference between a monolith versus a microservices architecture and definitely microservices uh, is the go-to thing right now but not always so with this said and done now we understand the difference now let's understand what kind of probing questions we have to ask in order to ascertain that whether in this particular scenario remember the question which we uh, saw at the start at this particular juncture do we really need to go to microservices architecture or not can we hold on okay so let's go to that decision matrix and there is no right or wrong it's just that interviewer wants to understand how you approach this problem statement so let's understand that friends before we move ahead if you are someone who's looking to start his or her career on cloud especially on aws which is the leading cloud provider in the market then i would definitely recommend you checking our aws cloud jumpstart program which is very good for beginners you just go and check the link in the description see whatever we have covered it it has more than 15 plus hours of content and not only that we have also added a very special module which will tell you how you can use generative ai effectively in any of your cloud specific jobs be it preparing for the interview preparing your cv making architecture solving different kinds of problems and how you can use things like prompt chaining to get better output from uh, Claude, from ChatGPT. So it's a very, very good course. More than 500 students have already got great benefits from it. So I will hugely, hugely recommend that you check it out. And apart from that, I also have a free guide, which is a AWS cheat sheet, which you can download for free. So go check it out. So friends, I have now come up with a decision tree matrix, which you can use during your interview for asking the right questions in order to come to a point where you can decide whether this use case is better fit for monolith versus a microservices architecture and this is not an exhaustive list when you will actually do it in production there will be n number of different other questions but this will give you a flavor of how you can come to that conclusion so starting here first of all you have to understand what is the business domain and what is the nature of that domain is it a simple crud application a very simplistic application if that is the case then this can be i'll just write m wherever a monolith wins okay so this in here is a one signal that it can be a monolith but if it is a complex multi-domain, then you have to ask a follow-up question. What is a follow-up question? That if it is a multi-domain application with a complex uh, business context, then are the context bounded? What does that mean is that if the boundaries of that business context is clearly defined or not. So if it is fuzzy and not very clear and very closely interconnected, then it will be very difficult for you to break it down. So again, this will be moving towards or leaning towards a monolith. Okay, let me take mono, mono, monolith. Okay. But if again we go down and if there is a clear separation, that's a positive sign that we are mo moving towards a microservices. Now understanding the scaling pattern. So I'll just put a tick. So this is a tick for microservices. Again, the clear separation is a positive sign. Scaling pattern. If it is a uniform thing, it is again no need for microservices because if everything is scaling and the needs are like everything should scale together, then does not qualify for a microservices uh, design pattern. But if it is different, which most likely will be then definitely you can go further and then you will come to a very important point which is data consistency because that plays a huge role in your decision so if it is a banking application or an application which is very strongly coupled and needs asset transactions then you know and you need consistency right now right there then you know it leans towards being a monolith however the there are caveats okay this is not one thing answering all your questions i'm just giving you that how you lean towards a particular decision so if it is strongly asset compliant then it is not a very thumbs up thing for microservices architecture but if if, if eventual consistency is okay then it is a tick for being a microservice because generally in microservices architecture if eventual consistency is there it helps because you do not need to reflect the data transactions immediately at uh, in multiple uh, microservices which you will be building release frequency very very important if it is weekly or monthly no need no need it is like clear case of monolith 
it. Uh, you don't need to deploy uh, a microservices CI CD pipeline for weekly or monthly. But if it is multiple times daily, like for example, Netflix releases so many shows daily, Uber, all these kind of uh, applications which need so many transactions, so many releases every day, then obviously it leans towards microservices. Coming to the team structure, if it is a single developer team, less than 10 people, they can't handle the load of microservices. So you have to scale up. It's not that you can simply say, no, no, we have less than 10, we'll not go micro. It, it is one of those decisions. You can definitely hire and increase your team size, right? This is just the pointers which you have to keep in mind. If your team is bigger, multiple teams are there and cross-functional teams are there. And if the size is greater than 20 to 30, some uh, DevOps teams have more than 50 people also, then it is a good sign for choosing a microservices solution. Then comes the DevOps maturity. If you are like, if your team has no knowledge of DevOps, have never deployed a CI CD or it has very, have very basic knowledge of DevOps, then it will be not good for them to jump into directly producing a microservice architecture. So they have to invest, the company has to invest on the training and uh, skills of that particular team. But if your DevOps maturity is strong, which means you have CI CD, you know how the messaging queue works, how you use Git, how you use Git, Hub, how you use Jenkins that means you have done it you have practical knowledge so if all these sticks are there then somewhere here you can say that yes it is it can be a microservices architecture okay and there there will be trade-offs it is not a binary decision there would be places where you know you think that okay this leans towards monolith but what we can do to make sure that we still go for microservices and the biggest and which i have not added because there are so many there are regulatory compliances then there are decision uh, decision made on whether you will be on prem or on cloud so there are various decisions but this gives you a framework to ask probing questions to the interviewer and one of such questions would be what would be your capex or opex capital expenditure or operational expenditure cost which you are thinking about what is your budget to be honest because when you're deploying microservices you will be using kubernetes you will be using containers you will be using so many different applications uh, databases obviously the overall cost will increase but with that the performance of your application will increase the scalability and flexibility will increase which will eventually help you increase your business and get some profit okay so these are the questions which you should ask so when the interviewer asks that uh, whether we should move to microservices you should pause and you should say sir before we come to that conclusion i would like to ask certain questions about this specific application and then you can start with what is the business domain in which this application is is it a tightly very tightly coupled can we separate it into different uh, functional domains all these questions although you might not never be able to answer it 100 percent the approach with which you go about answering that makes a difference so friends i hope now you know the difference between monolith versus microservices architecture and which one to go for during your interview round and i hope Hope you learned something if you did please give it a like thumbs up share comment subscribe guys a lot of you do not subscribe to this channel please we try to bring it knowledge to everyone so do consider subscribing and until next time keep learning keep sharing and yes keep growing bye for now